is a very simple question, but there are no simple answers and there are no short answers to this one. The question, what is the gospel? The Apostle Paul writing to the Corinthians said, I want to remind you of the gospel I preach to you, 1 Corinthians 15, 1. Now, gospel means good news, and it's all about Christ. Firstly, about Christ dying for our sins. Sin is the word to describe human resistance to God and his requirements. Sin offends God and serves to separate people from the God who made them and it stops them from discovering life as God intended them to live. God loves his sinful people but cannot and will not tolerate their sin and therefore has stepped into the human situation to do something about it. He sent his son Jesus to live as people were intended to live. The result was a perfect life that pleased God and showed us how guilty we are. But Jesus was mistreated and rejected and ultimately was killed. He was powerful enough to overcome his enemies, but he did not do it. He died willingly, but not as a martyr. Sin leads to death. It is called sin's wages and means more than physical death. It means separation from God now and for all eternity. And there's nothing we can do to rectify this awful situation. But Jesus died in our place, willingly, so that we can be forgiven and our lives could be put on a proper basis with God. This is the first part of the gospel. It's really good news. But the second part says that Christ was buried. Nothing surprising about that, he was dead. But to show that he was really dead, and many witnesses, including the authorities, could testify to that fact, he was placed in a tomb which was sealed, and in addition, a guard was put in place. This may not seem very important until we note the third part of the good news, and it is this, he was raised on the third day. This remarkable statement refers to the fact that on inspection, the tomb was found to be empty, the body had disappeared, and then time after time, people started to say that Christ had appeared to them. Lots of people in different places and situations, and word began to spread that Jesus had hinted that this would happen, and that Jesus who had died for our sins had been raised from the dead and was alive. This was really good news. This really is gospel. You see, the big enemy that human beings face and which we have never mastered is death. It happens to everyone eventually. We might try to delay it, but we cannot overcome it. But when Jesus was raised from the dead, God showed what he could do and how powerful he is. He also took the fear out of death because Jesus showed that there is life after death. Raising Jesus from the dead also showed that God approved of what his son had done in dying for our sins and that God accepted his sacrifice and forgiveness was now available to all. There's much more. But this is the basis of the good news. The big question then becomes, what do we do about this? Paul explained this too. He said that we need to receive the good news, or that is, believe it wholeheartedly. Then he said we are to take our stand upon it, and added, and hold firmly to it, or to let people in our sphere of influence know that we are a forgiven sinner, who rejoices in God's love and grace and seeks to live fully in the conscious enjoyment of being empowered by the living Lord Jesus to live a life that honors God and blesses people. This is the gospel and it is good news all round. So there you have it. <laughs> There's much, much more. There's a whole Bible full of this gospel, but that's an abbreviated version I hope you'll find something to ponder there and respond to. But what it means is we receive the gospel, we take our stand upon it, and we hold firmly to it. And this is all about God in Christ 
doing for us that we cannot do for ourselves. Good news, folks.